Matt and I are here to help you finish off the week with a win as we provide you with some must-add players on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at DonMartinoFB. Here, as always, is my brother, my co-host, my partner in crime, Matthew Ane, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Ane. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would Truly, truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. And if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit that little bell below. It subscribes to the channel and gives you notification every time you drop a new episode. And lastly, but most importantly to Matt and I, guys, join us on the subtext platform where the link is in our bio uh, or available on any of our social media platforms. On subtext, we provide an in-depth personalized experience. You get text message alerts right to your phone with prospect call-ups, injury alerts, and so much more than we can offer in this 30-minute podcast and guys today's episode is brought to you by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on mlb and use the code all lowercase locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. and matt as i mentioned let's help the fans uh you know and the listeners uh finish off the week strong with some uh guys that they really need to consider uh getting on their fantasy baseball teams all right, and I got a good one for him. Uh, not performing as hot recently, but at a mega spring, and I think there's more to more good times to come. And he's out there in leagues, and that's Henry Davis. Henry Davis, we all saw what he did in spring. Um, you know, really did mash the ball quite a bit. And I, you know, just wasn't able to translate this this week, you know, maybe cooled off just a tad, but I think he's gonna turn it around quite quite easily. He's 22% owned. Um, you know, this spring he mashed about 42 at bats. He had seven runs, three doubles, four bombs, 12 ribs, you know, walked seven times to 10 strikeouts, batted 310, had the OPS of 1067. You know, all great numbers. His minor league track record is pretty nice, too. You know, in 2023, the dude had 196 at bats, 32 runs, 10 doubles, two triples, 12 bombs, 32 ribs, 10 stolen bases, and batted 306. The upside is there. The Pittsburgh lineup is looking good. You know, they just threw up like not uh seven seven runs today so far against the Nats. Like they're moving. Going and the yeah. And you know, you add Henry Davis to start getting hot and things are gonna get great. Just got catcher eligibility. So like Henry Davis is right now is a solid ad and quite honestly could be one of the cheat codes at at catcher for this whole year. So I uh, honestly pick him up now while the iron's still uh cooled off on him. Well, Matt, I'm on board. I'm on board. I love Henry Davis. 22% owned on Yahoo. And as you mentioned, the thing is, I think he started off a little bit cold. And some people, like, you know, are, are hasty at the beginning here. Might have dropped him, especially in those two-catcher leagues. He should be owned in every single two-catcher league. Um, and even in those one-catcher leagues, those 14, 15-man leagues right now, if he's available, we definitely got to give him a look. Because former number one overall pick has the prospect pedigree. Henry Davis, a little bit of pop. Uh, you know, he's got some speed as well. Uh, could definitely hit for some better batting average, and I think the luck's going to turn around. And even if you can go out there and uh, uh, if he is owned and you could stack, snag him for the super cheap, uh, he's like a definitely a must add, must get on my team uh, kind of guy. Uh, let's move on to this next guy though, and and somebody who's just been hurt their whole career and hasn't been healthy. Uh, Alex Kirilov. And I don't know if it's a, I don't know, Matt. Is it a Twins thing? Maybe it's the Twins thing. Maybe uh, I don't know. Royce Lewis Buxton. It's starting to look like it might be a Twins thing. But Kirilov is healthy right now. He's hitting four forty four. He's got four runs in RBI. Uh, he's been looking really good, and he's moved up to second in that Twins lineup. He went four for four on April third uh, with two runs. Just somebody, uh, you know, another guy got some prospect pedigree. You know, can hit the ball. Uh, pretty well hitting at the top of a lineup that you know is uh pretty decent behind him 
Uh, I like me some Alex Kirilov. He's not like, you know, um, uh, well, he's only 10% owned, so, you know, a lot of uh, places to pick him up. Not the best guy on this list, but, you know, uh, in those deeper leagues, a, a guy who has hit, you know, who hit 270 last year with 11 homers, uh, 41 RBIs, 35 runs in 88 games, 281 at-bats. Uh, minor league track record is uh, pretty solid. A guy who's 26 years old, you know, uh, just really hope this guy can stay healthy. And, uh, you know, we, I think we can give him a, a shot in deeper leagues. Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, too, I mean, like, if you're lacking in batting average going into the weekend, he's batting 444 right now. You know, I kind of want a piece of that action and see if I can just, you know, follow my rule, batting batting average off the waiver wire and kind of boost that category up. Even if he gets me a couple hits over the weekend, he could give me the boost and kind of put me over the edge to either maintain the lead in batting average or catch up. So, like, there's still a value. He's not a long-term play. Maybe he is. Uh, but right now, just looking at, you know, his his stats, I don't think he's kind of good outside of the next two weeks. And it's more of a TBD thing. But, hey, for the weekend, let's see if he could at least provide some boost in the category. But anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about Johanny of Suarez. Um, Suarez, you know, is performing right now, too. Um, not my favorite guy on this list either. But, hey, he's doing his thing. He has 26 at bats right now. He has three runs. He has a double. He has a bomb. He has five ribs. You know, he has two walks, seven strikeouts, and you know, he's batting three forty six. Like, you know, this is this is contribution. This is somebody that you know is hot right now. I don't know if he has long term play, but hey, why not add and see where see where the road takes you? I mean, you lost Royce Lewis. He might be a nice little replacement. So, I mean, check it out and ride him while he's hot, and when he's when he's not, you drop him. Yeah, Matt, the thing works, Lewis, Josh Young, third baseman are dropping like flies. And third, third base was, uh, you know, semi-deep going into the year. It wasn't like, you know, one of the weaker positions, but somewhere in the middle. Uh, Suarez is 56% on. He's getting up there, but I did want to throw his name out there. He has prestigious power, um, you know, has hit, you know, uh, 49 home runs in his career before. He's hit 31 in 2021 and ah. 2022. Yeah, and uh, there was some background destruction there. So it's one of those things where Dom has a good point, but we're not able to hear it. So anyway, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about Brandon Marsh here. Um, Brandon Marsh, uh, Dom, do you want to talk about him or you want to finish your take? Uh, yeah, guys, sorry about that. Uh, just the thing is, uh, I love Eugenio Suarez, a lot of power, uh, and on a better team than he was last year in a better park to hit him than he was last year. Um, but that's all I really had to say. Matt, why don't you hop in and talk about Brandon Marsh real quick? All right, sounds good. Brandon Marsh here. Uh, Philadelphia Philly, um, Marsh is honestly one of those guys where like, if he gets everyday play, I'm pretty excited to see him play. Uh, when he has played this season, he has looked good, you know, through 18 at bats, he's had three runs, two bombs, three ribs, a stolen base struck out about eight times, no walks, but batting 333 with an OPS of one, 1000. So I like, I'm all about that thing is he's getting platooned, you know, they're, you know, the manager likes to get super cute with lefty righty and sit him against lefties. And it's kind of annoying. Uh, if Marsh can work himself to be an everyday play, he'll have longer term value. But when he does play, he is worth playing as well. So, you know, if you're a little bit desperate, you're in a deeper league, I'd probably add him. But right now I'm not rushing out there to go get him. But Marsh does pose some value when he actually is out on the field. Yeah, Matt, I like Brandon Marsh. And you know what? It's somebody that definitely had some pedigree coming up through the minors. A big six foot four, 215 pound lefty. Uh, if you've never seen Brandon Marsh before, he just looks like he could build you a, a log cabin from scratch with that giant beard of his. But you know what? Um, last year showed a lot of promise. Uh, I, I really think, you know, he's a guy at 26 years old that, you know, as Matt said, if the Phillies let him play, uh, you know, he's played in every game but one so far. You know, as Matt mentioned, you know, they 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 sit him every now and then. But even in the one of those games that he's had, he's still got two at-bats. So, you know, it looks like if he's somebody that can get hot and they just let him ride out, I really think he's somebody that can make an impact. 5% owned on Yahoo is uh, Brandon Marsh. Uh, but before we move in here, and we throw our last bat out there and we move into some starting pitchers that you definitely want to add to your team. We have a couple quick ads for you guys. And guys, get, get your resolutions ready with uh, with Factor. 
so you're ready for a new year. Factors ready to eat meals and deliver takes the stress out of meal prep, meal planning, and set up your success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, meal-delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and other options, plus 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutrition and flavorful options to kickstart your resolution. Stress less over meaningless um, uh, meal time in New Year. Factor no prep, no mess meals free uh, free up time <laughs> free up time otherwise spent shopping, cooking, and cleaning. No more wasting time in the kitchen. Not only does Factor offer faster, fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook, they help me stay on top of my goals with offering like offerings like Protein Plus and Keto. I could stay on track. This definitely is going to come in handy for me in the new year. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50 to use the code locked on MLB50 and get 50% off. That code is locked on MLB50 at factormeals.com slash locked on locked on MLB50 to get 50% off. And Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick less or more than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Exploring my skills on prize picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few tips, taps, you can transform $10 into $1,000 easily. Prize picks is incredibly user friendly. You can make a selection and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Plus, guys, as a host locked on fantasy baseball, I got some great picks for you. Offer Jesus Lazardo to have higher than 1.5 walks in his next start. Offer Zach Geloff to get higher than 0.5 in his next 0.5 ribbies in his next outing. Offer Julio Rodriguez to have higher than 0.5 runs in his next game. Download the app today and use the code locked on MLB for first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use the code locked on MLB for first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. And guys, are you watching? Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day. I have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. Dive into this season with Dom and I as we as we as you can rely on our dynamic content and get real time alerts right to your phone. Uh, you know, you know that that include wave wire rankings, instant call up notifications, injury actions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of the fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext. Where your path to victory begins. Subscribe now and elevate that fantasy baseball experience to new levels. And guys, if you're if you're not on the subtext and you want to see, okay, how do I rank these guys today? Well, you're going to want to join, and you could get that answer tomorrow or today, actually, when you're listening to it. So please join the subtext now. Whew. Wow, I need hey, man. water. Uh, that's a it. lot. That that's yeah. tough. We 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 appreciate you, man. We appreciate all you do, and that's not even haterade, guys. That's that that's just if you're not watching on YouTube, Matt's doing a, a big gulp, but that's just uh that's a lot for anybody. But Matt, we appreciate you. We'll we'll keep things pushing here. Let's move on to this uh, last must add bat, and let's talk about Charlie Blackman. A little bat blast from the past, the 37 year old Charlie Blackman. The thing is, he plays half his games in chorus, man. You can't really go wrong like that. A guy that could still hit the ball, um, batting average, I think, is something that's still in the cards for Charlie Blackman. A guy who hit uh, 279 last year doesn't really steal those bags anymore, or hit for that pop like he used to, but just a plug and play kind of guy. You know, outfield is a very thin position. Uh, right now, Blackman is owned in 
only 10% of leagues on Yahoo. Just a guy I would look his way. You know, play him when he's at cores. And, you know, he's been hitting leadoff, so a lot of runs. Uh, you know, maybe he can steal a couple bags. He does already have a one steal this year, stole four last year. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a little pep left in his step, or maybe I'm just a little delusional and uh, I miss the old days when Charlie Blackman used to steal 40 bags. Uh, but, Matt, uh, uh, thoughts on Charlie Blackman, brother? Uh, I mean, I don't trust it long term, but the way I look at it is, you know, you ride it while it's hot. You know, juice I'm the still- orange. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not opposed at any point in the season to, you know, be prideful and ride out a hot hand. That's just, you know, the way the name of the game, especially in daily daily um, leagues where you're making roster moves every single day. You know, it, it's just one of those one of those strategies you just kind of got to take advantage of and just like stream the hot hand and just like, OK, cool. Like you got to just do it. So, you know, if Charlie Blackman's hitting at home or if Charlie Blackman's been hot, I'm going to write him out because, hey, there may not be a better option right now, especially the way injuries and guys are dropping like flies. So, you know, Charlie Blackman's like a suffice starter here and there. So, yeah, right now this weekend, I'll roll him out. But all right, let's move on. Let's talk about Frankie Montas. Uh, Montas is on the Reds now. If you guys didn't know that he left the Yankees and went to the went to the Reds. Um, has pitched about 11 innings, started two games, um, you know, had nine Ks in those two outings. Between those nine, uh, two outings, he has not really given up a run. He's a .77 ERA, looking good so far, uh, you know, with a 102 whip. Like, I'm really not mad at these stats. Do I think this is legitimate? Do I think this is something that's going to be long-term either? Absolutely not. But, hey, you know what? If he's pitching this weekend, I'll do it. Let me see if he is real quick. I um, think so. I would assume so too, but I want to see the matchup. Montas, he is rolling out this weekend. Uh, maybe not because he pitched on Wednesday, but if he does, he might slide him in on Sunday. Oh, you're right. You're right. It might be yeah. Monday. Yeah. If if anything, like if you still got an ad come the end Milwaukee, of the week. Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Yeah. He is Milwaukee. I'm not exactly fearful to roll him out against Milwaukee, even though Milwaukee's pretty good. They've been good. Yeah, they've been good so far. But you know what? The way Montas has just been performing, I kind of would roll him out and just let it ride. You know, what's the worst that happens? Being the week you start off a little bit higher, or you could work yourself back from it. But, you know, I don't want to pass on his production and kind of ride the hot hand and forget about what Frankie Montas was in the past. Not saying he's going to come anywhere near it, but even if you get a fraction of it for a short period of time, I'm going to be happy with that performance, especially on my team. Yeah, Matt, and you know what the 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 start isn't in uh you know Great American Small Park uh you know Cincinnati, so we'll we'll, we'll take that. And you know Frankie Montas has pedigree; he's been a you know all star caliber pitcher before. Uh, not that he can get back there, maintain it as Matt said, but you know what? Um, grab that uh you know uh fire. What is it? Uh, I I don't, I don't even know the the saying I was going for. Uh, the electric in a jar, and you know bottle it up, and uh yeah, you know keep it while it's going with Frankie Montas. Uh, let's move on to somebody, you know, from a guy who's been around a little bit to um, somebody that is a little bit, uh, you know, newer to the, the game. Let's talk about Reese Olsen from the Detroit Tigers, you know, the the 24 year old who, you know, looked, uh, you know, um, decent in his little um, run last year. You know, as a 23 year old Reese Olsen last year uh, in 18 starts, uh, 21 games overall. So a couple games out of the bullpen, 399 ERA, 103 innings, 103 strikeouts, a 1 1 1 whip. Uh, looked pretty solid. And then his first start this year, Reese also went 5.2 innings, struck out three, walked two, gave up three hits, and had a, um, you know, uh, just uh, looks pretty solid so far. You know, somebody with uh, not a crazy amount of prospect pedigree and his minor league track record isn't fantastic, but pitching in a good park, uh, pitching for, you know, a, a Detroit team that, you know, is out there fighting. Uh, and I think they, uh, you know, could be pretty good going forward. A lot of young pitching there and, you know, all those guys together, you know, probably picking each other's brains, you know, trying to get better. Uh, looks good. And uh, Reese Olsen's first start was against the Mets. I know the Mets haven't looked great so far, uh, but I, I do like Reese Olsen. Like, you know, not the best guy on this list, but at um, 19% owned, widely, widely available. Yeah. I mean, Reese Olsen is, is somebody that, you know, we weren't sure was even going to have a, a rotation spot at the beginning of the year, but earned his way over – over a few other guys and you know so has he gets one of those guys loved him yeah uh but was able to maintain the spot i don't know how long the leash is but hey he's able to go out there against the mets and hold his own so i'm able to say hey like okay i'm good with this start so 
you know what? Let's see what it's going out. He's going up against the Angels on Sunday, so it's not a bad start. So let's see what let's see where it is. I mean, actually, let me see if it's at home too. That'd be the best. yeah, and it's at home. So, oh no, I'm sorry. I was I was reading the wrong start. I apologize. Um, it's probably against Oakland if he gets rolled out. I apologize there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm still all about it, and Oakland's an even better matchup. So let's go. Uh, sorry for the mistake. But anyway, we're gonna we're, uh, before I keep going here, we're gonna and talk about these other names. I have a break for you. And we're talking about our friends at Robin hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robin hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin hood gold. But now get this now through April 30th, Robin hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as, as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. And oh boy, uh, all right, Matt. Uh, why don't you hop back in here and uh, I'll grab this next guy for us? All right, we're talking Tanner Houck. Tanner Houck is a good one. I like the name. I like the like where he's gonna be. I like what he did in his first outing. Uh, came out first outing and kind of really performed. Honestly, threw out ten strikes through six innings, gave up no runs, only three hits. Like looked really good, and you know the the whip was a point. Point five, like I mean, hey, you can't ask for more. Hauk also just is somebody that we've always kind of wanted him to kind of like break out, but was never really able to take advantage of any of the opportunities he got at the mound last year. Finished with a five ERA, but hey, maybe this is the year. He's still sort of young at twenty eight, so the the breakout for a pitcher is still there. This is the prime years, and I always say with pitchers, hey, um, you know, there could always be the later breakouts because pitching is more of a chess match versus checkers. So, you know, the older they are, the wiser they are. And that's normally what happens is they're just a later breakout. So how could be the one I, I like him a lot. The talent's good. The pitches are good. He's got great stuff. Like how does have the upside? Do I think this is going to be long-term? I'm hesitant on it. If I had to, you know, put a number on where I think that would be in terms of likelihood, probably about like a four ish, maybe a three ish, but Hey, I'm willing to roll him out and take out the shot and see if he can repeat what he did or even come damn near close. Uh, you know, how Hauk, Hauk has already came out like fire, so who's to say he can't do it again? Yeah, how as you mentioned, he has great stuff and kind of always has had the talent, but just is kind of oh, he had been a little bit banged up here and there, and then always been moved around between the bullpen and starting. But I don't know. I think Boston's really figured something out with their starting pitching this year between, you know, um, Hauk and Whitlock, who I think we talked about recently, and uh, Nick Pavetta, uh, you know, Brian Bayo. They just kind of looked really, really solid at the starting pitching. And, you know, Hauk is no exception. Uh, right now, Hauk is a, uh, only owned in 31% of leagues, which is kind of wild to me. You know, I know it was against Oakland, but, hey, you know, it was very, very successful. His uh, next outing is against the Angels on the 7th. I'd uh, definitely pick uh, Hauk up and give him a shot. Honestly, out of everybody we're talking about today, Hauk just might be my favorite. Uh, but let's move on to somebody else that I love, somebody that we talked about so much last year. And, Matt, I don't really know how much we've talked about him, if at all, this year. 
But uh, Reed Detmers, man, uh, Demeter, Demeter's running again. You know, we, we that was the you know the nickname we were giving him last year, and you know it looks like it's finally starting to click for uh, Reed Detmers. Uh, five innings in his first start, seven strikeouts, one earned run. Uh, just looked really solid, and he's only twenty six percent owned um, on Yahoo. And guess who that first start was against? It was against Baltimore. Um, in Baltimore too. A uh, really good team, and just to see Reed Detmers, you know, really all right, so locking it in this year, uh, really looks, uh, you know, um, awesome to me. And if this guy breaks out, the strikeout upside is real. So you know, somebody that could put up some really, really big numbers in that department. ERA still might be a uh, low to mid threes, but hey, big strikeouts, and maybe the WHIP will be somewhat decent too. I definitely think we got to consider Reed Detmers at this point. Yeah, Detmers is always somebody I'll cross my fingers on and take a shot on. Um, you know, it's not just because I have a great nickname for him, but it's also because the talent is there. He does have good stuff. It's just he just can't put it all together. And maybe this is maybe we might see it some point this season, and it might be a quarter of a season, a half a season, or in spurts, and then next year he might take off. We'll see. I want to see how much the meter costs this year and what it's going to perform at. So yeah. Um, Adam right now, while the while the wave is right hot and Let's see what happens. But all right, we got our last guy here, and it's an interesting one. It's Gavin Stone. Gavin Stone um, is somebody I liked. Got lit up in his first start, honestly, which, you know, it's kind of doesn't tell the whole story because he he posed a, a, what do you call it, a 5-4 ERA against St. Louis and had a 1-6 whip. But that's not the whole story because if you look at his FIP, which is fielded in independent pitching, uh, which pretty much said if his defense was average behind him, then he would have this ERA, right? And it's a 1-5. Now, obviously, I don't think he pitched a 1-5 ERA game, but he definitely pitched better than a 5 ERA. There was just a mistake that happened, and a couple things got out of control. But he didn't give up a home run. That's for starters. Uh, he had six strikeouts in that outing. And you know what? He gave up seven hits. That's the thing. He got in trouble. Guys got on base, and then things just went, just kind of unraveled from there. So Gavin Stone, I think, is you know, not out on. I think if somebody dropped him, which happened in a couple places, you need to go and add him and pick him up before his start this weekend. You know, he's going up against the Cubs on Sunday, and I'm kind of not scared to throw him out there. I have him in every league where he's available for me that I'm in. So, you know, Gavin Stone is somebody you'd really just need to go and add and not miss out on because I think we might see a breakout this season. Yeah, man, I'm all in on Gavin Stone as well. I got a couple shares myself, and he's somebody who had a really strong spring. Gavin Stone in the spring uh, had four starts, a 3-2-1 uh, ERA, 14 innings, 13 strikeouts, only two walks, and a 0-7-8 whip. The control has, you know, um, actually looked pretty good uh, for the young Gavin Stone um, so far. Uh, this season and you know uh, the spring I like to see that improvement from from him and you could tell that he's been working on his stuff and I, I really think you know like you said Matt uh, you know Gavin Stone somebody I've seen dropped in a couple of leagues and I you know I was like all right I'll just I'll snag him up then you know because this kid has a lot of upside the Dodgers are very very good with starting pitching especially you know all these young starting pitchers coming up through the system with Bobby Miller Sheehan Stone uh, not that they're all going to work out but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they did uh, Gavin Stone started uh, against the Cubs um, in, in Wrigley. So let's see how it goes for him. You know what? I kind of want to get him before that start because if he really shows out, uh, that 56% is going to be at 70, 80 uh, before we all know it. Uh, Matt, we got uh, a little bit of time here. If uh, and you want to chime on in on anything before going into the weekend here. Um, Honestly, I, my biggest piece of advice would be if you're down in K's or something of the sort, you know, just ride the hot hand and don't be afraid to have your ERA even more blown up, especially if you're if it you don't think you're going to be able to reach it. Just try and take the category. And that goes for any category. You're out, you're down in stolen bases and a guy isn't um, a guy isn't uh, what do you call it? Performing in like batting ever or something. Who cares? Roll them out, get the stat. And if you're down in that other category that that person isn't affecting, then who gives a crap? Because you just got to get that category out from if you're already that far behind. Yeah, yeah, well, well said, brother. Um, my quick little two cents. Um, going into this weekend is don't overreact. It's been such a short, short sample size, and you know, guys might be struggling or overperforming. 
But for most of the players, you know, at least the players that have been around for a while, we know who they are. Uh, some of these younger players like the Jackson Churios who might be underperforming, don't worry about them either. Um, and then if you have any questions, hey, join us on Subtext where we can give you some really, really great information, you know, text messages right to your phone. Uh, but guys, that is all for today. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Shout out to our everydays and new listeners for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. But guys, until next time, Peace. see ya.